in that first paragraph where it says adopt the highway, can you add after that adopt the stream? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a very popular program throughout the state and the country. Errol, and one of the things I know you guys combined um, wording from the old plan, I like how y'all break things out into individual bullets. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you some language, but I, I think that first increased efforts and those other paragraphs can be kind of individual bullets rather than all grouped together. Sure. And I, I like how y'all do that. I think it's better because it makes it easier to focus on what the issue is or the opportunity is. Definitely. Yeah. Um. If you're going to mention adopt the highway and adopt the stream, you might want to mention, uh, well, in fact, Wells Fargo's Um, what, what is it again? Walls Watershed Coalition. Watershed Coalition? Walls Watershed Coalition. Walls? Yeah. Right here on the thing, on the desk. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, got it. Thank you. Since, since we added the food and stuff in this one, should that be added as just a piece under the opportunity that we have an opportunity to uh, increase the food accessibility to uh, people who are doing without? Yes, I'll, I'll write that down. Thank you. You brought up previously the public fishing access. Uh, Saturday there were several people fishing down at the State Road Bridge and um, they had to pull one of their vehicles out because it got stuck in the quite large potholes. Um, uh, this is sort of an issue at other river access points. I hear that uh, Parks and Rec has got funding for improving access to the Little River boat ramp and I heard a rumor that there is some County program, maybe someone here from the county knows to improve the access to the other boat ramps. If so, uh, those could go under either access to public fishing access and access to boat ramps could go under either issues or opportunities or both. Yes, and it could, it could belong possibly under community facilities and services, but I'll move it down here and. Uh, We'll find a place for it. it. It does maybe go under community wellness because if it's fishing for food, then it's um, well, we sustainable food. We've got it on that list for opportunities. <coughs> oh, right. Uh -huh. Do, you, do you think? Do you think? Oh, uh, third way down page 13. Right. Along with um, public fishing access, uh -huh. exercise trails, and dog parks. Dog parks. Well, it's all an opportunity for people to be outside and get a bit of exercise. So I guess that. Okay. And of course, the, the county's the county's building an entire new boat ramp on the Alapaha, so uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, also related to that, you know, there's a sign on 75 that says "Gateway to the Open Swamp," which is true and is something worth bragging about. But most people don't realize that uh, Grand Bay Wildlife Management is actually and uh, Banks Lake are actually run by the same people as the Okefenokee and have pretty much all the same plants, animals, community. It's like a mini Okefenokee right here in Lowndes. And of course, Grand Bay is partly in the year. That would be something worth mentioning. Paragraph, are we on the next page now? Um, I'm looking at page 13. Okay. Greater utilization of nonprofits. You have food, health food stores such as Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, those are not nonprofits. If you want to put them under commercial, that might be useful. Mm -hmm. They might encourage healthier eating, but only for people who can afford it. Those are not inexpensive stores. Yeah, those are. Well, how 
about uh, the farmers market, about Austin Farm Days. That's true. That's a good one. And if you it's are not technically list, non-profit, it's a city rent, is it? Is <laughs> it? Uh, and collaboration with the county, or the county yeah. owns the courthouse. Right. And if you are going to list any for-profit stores, you might also want to list, list uh, Dirt Road Organics. They're technically for-profit, although I don't believe they've ever turned to profit. They might someday. One thing I didn't see on here, Ariel, that I think is um, important for the opportunities is we seem to be a regional hub for medical care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a tremendous yeah. opportunity that we have when people travel to this community for not just SGMC, but specialized doctor services. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and, and then recently it seems like we have more employers who are participating in wellness programs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to me it used to just be the armed forces that had a wellness program, but now it seems more private employers and also government employers are now investing in, in wellness programs. So I think that's something of a new opportunity that wasn't there maybe 10 years ago. It certainly wasn't as prevalent. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, speaking of which, on March 31st at the City Hall Annex, there's going to be a planning session about local agriculture, um, partly organized by Charlie Barnes of Barnes Drugstore. This follows on from, and this might be worth mentioning, Gretchen isn't here so I can plug it, the Growing Local, South Georgia Growing Local Conference, an annual thing. It is non-profit. It occurs right here in Lowndes County. Mm -hmm. yeah, if we, had, if we had something to work in the low-income areas helping people do gardens. Gardens are simple. Gardens are cheap. We do. We have several things doing that, and that's part of what the planning discussion will be about on the 31st. Okay. I can't list the names, but um, I'm sure if you ask Gretchen or Charlie Barnes, they can. Where this says school-based health clinic now being worked on, a number of our schools have health clinics. Is this something separate? I don't know what that is. I mean, since, since the Family Connection started in 1990, we've had, we've had uh, school clinics increase in number every year since then. I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure who the might want to be. Yeah, and, and we might add, we've, we've made mention of the uh, Partnership for Health. They're about to open, or they've already opened a dental clinic in addition to what they're already doing. Um, one of the local dentists here who retired brought a majority of his equipment and his talents. Unfortunately, those are also people that have to be, you know, employed and have no income, have no uh, insurance, but it's more dental clinic than we had for low-income folks up to now, and, and that's just been a huge help because you got a dental emergency, you might as well have a broken leg. It's the same gonna be the same effect on your on your functioning. I can attest to South Georgia Medical Center has snake added venom. I, I am a satisfied user. <laughs> Very <Yum. nice> story. <laughs> Excellent. John, that is not community wellness. <laughs> <laughs> I feel much weller now. <laughs> That's natural resources. Yeah. Is strong egg barn related to the farmer's market? What is that? I'm not sure exactly what that is. It's third from good. the bottom. It says strong egg barn. I, does that mean something? I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that. Egg. I'm not sure about that. Okay. That would be updated. I have a question on the hydrocarbon. Years ago when I was growing up, there was always a horse arena at the civic center out there mm -hmm. and then it disappeared. They built another one, it disappeared. Now there was nothing in this county. You go over to Nashville, Berrien County, they have a arena that the people can come in and use there. And they started to build something really fancy down at Clotville and I asked them if the, it was going to be open for the children and young people to enjoy, and they said, no, it's just for show. So it's kind of one reason it fell through. Yeah, but the horse people didn't back it. Mm -hmm. okay. And here, that, I think that's, that's legitimate. I, I know there were at one time plans for that, but probably under community facilities and services, mm -hmm. or maybe cultural resources. But I knew of, um, it around 10 years ago, I think, when some of that was happening. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a guess what Strong Ag Barn might be about. 
the extension service is quite active in these parks. They're even almost staffed back up the way they need to be. And they're involved in things like the uh, annual ham and egg show, which is, as I may have mentioned before, one of only two left in the country. It's kind of a show place for the community. And the people involved, many of them are low-income farmers. Worth mentioning, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the, um, the first one, our local Red Cross staff have had a very good reputation. There are several organizations that you were talking about that are community-based and non-profit. Have you mentioned Coastal Plains? Oh, no, that's a good one. Uh, huge on that one. Yeah, that's important to mention. Yeah, and Coastal Plain is the one that's about to do the first ever uh, veteran homeless count in the next couple of weeks. They got tapped by HUD to do that. Okay, yeah. Is Coastal Plain federal? Is most of their federal funding funded. Is Coastal Plain EOA? Yeah, Economic Opportunity Association. It does. It does uh, head start and. Yeah. and uh, they're they're looking to do you know more stuff to help with repair of houses. They do a lot of weatherization. They do you know, they do help with, with a lot of low income folks who need to be in a better place. But there's there are grants that could come here that uh, you know the CDBG grant that comes every year could have other uses and it's primarily used to uh, help the city's CDBG grant at this point is primarily repairing houses for uh, elderly homeowners. Uh, but CDBG is a bunch of money and. Uh, it could be it could be divided out into other other uses. Five hundred thousand dollars. Are they located, Miss Jane, out on Bemis and? Uh, no, they're out, they're out on eighty four now. Okay, so the, did they used to be located at the corner of um, Bemis and Conrail? <clears throat> there there was one of their offices there, and there was one at Park and. Uh, so now and, they're strictly uh, on eighty four by the USDA. Right. Okay. That's where yeah. the main office is. There, their Head Start office is in ten counties. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me a minute. Eric? Yeah, I'm Mark Weisenbecker. This is my first meeting here. And that planning commission, Jason Davenport and, and Matt, sucked up all my time. So I'll try to catch <laughs> on at another time. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Community wellness opportunities. Do we want to take a look at housing issues? 